My name is Erin Karpinen and I am a coordinating biologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada at the Canada Saskatchewan Irrigation Diversification Centre in Outlook. What you're seeing here is the first year of a three-year trial that evaluates the effective seeding date on the irrigation requirements and water use efficiency of canola. This trial is part of a larger project that looks at addressing agriculture water uncertainty in the context of our changing environment. So experts predict that weather events such as flooding and drought are going to become more extreme and variable. So it's really important that we're looking at increasing water use and water use efficiency in drought prone areas such as here in Saskatchewan. In most production areas, early May seeding is generally recommended. So early seeded canola tends to produce higher yield and quality because the crop is able to use that early season water more effectively, flower before the peak heat in the summer, and mature earlier in the fall and avoid that risk of a fall frost. On the other hand, risk to consider when you're seeding early is a potential cooler soil temperatures that can delay emergence and also increase seedling mortality rates. Um, there's also the chance of catching a spring frost, which is something that we experienced this year around May 20th, but fortunately for us, we did not see any, any damage coming from that frost. So previous research has shown that there's a significant yield effect um, that's observed with different seeding rates or seeding dates in canola. So data collected from these seeding date trials shows that canola is, the yield loss in canola is greater than any other crop and that canola seeded early May uh, genuinely yield, yields about 6% higher than canola seeded in mid-May and about 12% higher than canola seeded in late May. Practically though, seeding is often delayed into late May and even early June depending on uh, individual farm operations and our local environmental conditions that year. Uh, so some Saskatchewan crop insurance data shows that about 43% of irrigated canola was seeded after the third week of May um, and that was data collected over the past 10 years. For this trial, uh, canola plots were seeded every two weeks starting with the early seeded treatment on April 30th, the mid seeded treatment on May 17th and the late seeded treatment on uh, May 31st. All plots were seeded at six and a half pounds per acre and received 140 pounds per acre of nitrogen and 15 pounds per acre of phosphorus fertilizers. Data, coll data collection throughout the field season so far has consisted of uh, plant emergent counts, plant height, crop staging and flowering notes, and also soil moisture monitoring using a POGO. So that moisture sensor um, measures the top five centimeters or two inches and also we had deeper watermark sensors installed at 30 centimeters so about one foot and 60 centimeters which is about two feet. So these moisture sensors we used a threshold of 50 percent of soil available water capacity and that's of a silty, a silty loam soil and that was our irrigation trigger. So these uh, moisture sensors had to be monitored quite frequently to determine our irrigation requirements and water use efficiency um, scheduling for individual treatments. Following harvest, we're going to determine we're going to take the yield and we're also going to take some seed quality parameters and also calculate water use efficiency using our rainfall and irrigation data that we collected throughout the season and also the change in uh, stored soil moisture. So some of the results that we've generated so far this field season are um, in terms of crop staging. Initially, there was a large difference between growth stage and uh, crop bio above ground and below ground biomass. On June 24th, the early seeded treatment was flowering. The mid seeded treatment was at rosette early bolting stage and the late seeded treatment was at four to six leaf stage. If you fast forward to today, all the treatments have finished flowering and are at the various stages of um, potting and maturity. The early seeded treatments took the longest to flower. That took about 50 days. Uh, the mid seeded plots flowered after 45 days and the late seeded after 35 days. So there's really no longer that two week difference between in development between these um, seeding date treatments. In terms of our irrigation, these plots were randomized so that means they had to be quite large to allow for the transition when irrigating um, individual treatments. Plots are 11 meters wide and there are five sprinklers over each plot. So for harvest, we will only be taking out about a one and a half meter strip out of the center of the plot. 
and the edges are really only serving as that transition zone and buffer for sprinkler overlap. To date, each treatment has received the following amounts of total moisture, that includes rainfall and irrigation, 12 and a half inches on the early seeded plots, 10.3 inches on the mid seeded plots, and 8.2 inches on the late seeded plots. Uh, some of the other agronomic measurements, the first thing we um, collected was emergent count, emergence counts, and those were really variable and ranged from about 60 to 100% um, in individual plots. But when we, you know, at the end of the day, when we averaged everything out, there was really no difference between in emergence between any of the seeding date treatments. Flea beetles were also a problem for us across all of the treatments. Um, and that was at that, just in the cotyledon and four to six leaf stage. And we did um, notice that there was more damage at, with the early seeded treatments. There was no difference between, in terms of plant height. So the, across all treatments, the average plant height was 120 centimeters, which is about four feet. So to sum things up in a broader sense, the results of this project are going to be used to better define water um, and irrigation requirements and water use efficiency for canola. So canola is also an important crop to be looking at because it does encompass some of the largest irrigated acreage in Saskatchewan. The use of these multiple seeding dates is going to provide data and recommendations that can be adapted across a wide range of management decisions as well as local environmental conditions. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone involved in this project. So Dale, Evan, Don, Barry, Richard, Daryl, Alan, Landry, Kennedy, and Naya. And I'd also like to thank everyone on the call today for joining in on our CSIDC virtual field day.